Hey there, and welcome to the Confident Woman Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Brooks. Join me as I sit down and chat with co-hosts, friends, and carefully curated guests and talk about all the things that empower you to become your best and most confident self. So let's get started. All right, welcome back to another episode of the Confident Woman Podcast. Today we have with us Kelsey Aida. Kelsey is a best-selling author and transformation facilitator who helps women manifest their dream lives and love themselves deeply through the process. She's the author of more than five personal development books, including Actually I Can, Affirmations for Happiness, Letters to the Universe, My Pocket Guide to Manifestation, and Self-Love for the Modern Woman. Alongside her books, she helps people via her international retreats, one-on-one coaching, online courses, and the popular spiritual podcast, High Vibe In It. So welcome, Kelsey. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Super excited to be here. Yes, likewise. And just a few moments ago, while we were chatting before we hit record, we were just talking about some of the things that we just really have in common and things that light us up. And of course, it centers around self-love. So before we dive into that, I would love for you, Kelsey, to kind of introduce yourself, anything that we haven't really talked about and kind of how you got into the space. Yeah, great question. It's a long story, but I'll try to keep it brief. Um, Yeah, so I basically help people. My expertise are really like manifestation and self-love and how self-love really supports your manifestation efforts. Because when you feel worthy and when you heal and you raise your vibration and you're feeling great, manifestation kind of just becomes like more effortless and in flow and you can just live a really intentional life with more ease and harmony. So I'm really just all about quality of life. That's like the most important thing to me. And I want everyone to live their best, most awesome, most fun, most juicy quality of life. So that's really my purpose here. And um, I started, I started teaching and helping people, let's see, probably probably like seven or eight years ago. And it was after I had been through a long period of depression and I was able to heal via like therapy, shamanism, um, like a little bit of plant medicine, um, a lot of asking the universe for the right resources, perspectives, help. And on the other side of that healing, when I was feeling happy and enjoying my life. And I was like, wow, everything that I just put all that work into, like it really worked. I just felt like I wanted everyone to have access to this sort of spiritual and personal development and empowering information. And I was like, well, I think I should be the one to give it to everybody. (laughs) So I decided in that moment, I was like, I'm going to be a self-help author. Back then it was like more called self-help. Now it's called more personal development, but I was like, I'm going to be a self-help author. I'm going to be the next Deepak Chopra. I want to write all the books to help all the people. And that's my new mission. But of course, like nobody knew who I was and I didn't want to write my first book in vain. So I started a blog and I would write about healing your depression and loving yourself through your anxiety and raising your vibration and healing your emotions and, you know, just things that make life easier and everything that was working for me at the time. And especially manifestation too, because I was dabbling in that and I was like, oh my gosh, this is so fun. We can just think our way into better lives. Like this is crazy, you know, before I got super, super deep into it. And that's really just what started it all. Fast forward now, a couple of years later, um, it's kind of blossomed into the podcast plus retreats, plus coaching, more books, more books on the way, courses, more courses on the way. and. I'm just really passionate about helping people feel good, enjoy their lives more and love themselves through that because life is so short and I'm really against unnecessary suffering. So, (laughs) oh my goodness, all the things I'm even just jotting down a couple, couple things that you had mentioned there that I would love to just talk further about, but you're so, you're so right. And I could really sense that passion from you because when, you know, you're going through your journey and at that point, at the start of a journey, how quickly the student then becomes the teacher. And here you are overcoming that, learning it, digesting it, diving in. And you're like a consumer of just life change and personal development. And then you're like, oh my gosh, this is incredible. Every person I meet has got to encounter this. Like it's so good to just keep to yourself. You got to share it. And so I love that word where it does become 
the student at one point and it manifests into that teacher ask mode where you get to give back to your community, to others and all those that, you know, maybe it's just one step behind or lots of steps behind you. Um, so I think that's so, so incredible that we can come full circle. And I can relate to that because it was very similar to what I had experienced in my own journey. And very similar to yours is where, you know, we, you know, here's a podcast, here's courses, coaching, mentorship programs, retreats, events, all the things, right? Because I think as we go through this walk of life, we don't realize how many different facets and different pillars we need to support us along the way. And you, it sounds like you built this incredible support system, not just for yourself, but those who are your leading and also alongside. And so that's just an incredible transformational story. So I just want to thank you for that because now you get to be here and share all that with our listeners, with your listeners, and just as a community as a whole. And this is really, again, what women's empowerment is all about. So yes, sharing is caring, you know, (laughs) exactly. (laughs) We can't just keep it all to ourselves. Like, how evil would it be if I was like, like, oh my God, I totally changed my life. My life is so awesome, but I'm going to keep all my secrets to myself and nobody can know how it's done. You know, (laughs) that would be terrible. And like, for me, I've always had a natural like skill or a gift for mastering information quickly and then synthesizing it and teaching it in a more simplified way. And I remember like even growing up in school, like kids would struggle with like a topic we were learning and on the playground, I would be like, well, I mean, I know the teacher's telling you to think about it like this, but like, did you ever try thinking about it like this? And then I would just like see the light bulb go off and they'd be like, oh my God, I finally get it. Like for the last six hours, I didn't get it. And like the one thing that you just said to me in two minutes made it land for me. And so I think I always knew that there was something to that, but I didn't really have anything to apply it towards or for until I really found this personal development, spiritual work. And then I was like, oh, yeah, I can use my gift of synthesizing and teaching information in a really simplified way for this, because some personal development tools and spiritual concepts can feel so big or so many steps or such a long process. And it's like, I think that, you know, time is of the essence. So I like to make everything really simple, easy to digest and understand and like powerful and efficient. Exactly. And like you said, it's it's when you're just getting started. So anyone who's just like, oh my gosh, I, I need to take that first step. It could feel so daunting. And and that's where the overwhelm, because it just feels like you're stepping into the vast unknown, which which you are. Yeah. And that's why it's so important to have that guidance of, and support of somebody who had been there or is literally in there with you. Um, and that's what I found is very relatable from both receiving and the giving end of it, where you get to walk in partnership in life with others doing the, you know, similar, you know, similar obstacles to overcome all on a destination towards the same path. And it's kind of like, okay, we, we're not meant to do life alone. So let's join forces and do this together. And yes. that's, uh, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't realize that I needed that at the time because all I was thinking was like, but where's the starting line? And then what do I do from there? Like, is there a gun that's going to go off and I sprint, but how far do I sprint and can I last? And so there's a lot of that, that overwhelm when somebody is just getting started. And so those that are listening, I want you to know that if that's you, that's okay. Cause we all start somewhere and this is where we have this collective community that comes together to really support. And so whether it's our, our guest or, you know, whether it, you coming into my circle or to Kelsey's circle, we're there really for that sole intention to help lead and guide you. And I think for anyone who's feeling lost, like, Oh, I know I need to like work on myself or improve my life. But like, where do I start? Just start wherever you're feeling the most called or like, excited. Like if there's a book that you're like, oh, that looks so awesome. Like read the book. (laughs) If there's a coach that you like really resonate, like work with that coach. If there's a retreat that's really calling to you, like go on the retreat, just follow your intuition in that gentle, but excited way. And it's not going to lead you wrong. Yes. And, and so that brings me to one of my questions for you is on your start of your journey or even throughout What were some of those obstacles that you may have faced that you can really give back to our listeners or how you would coach uh, some of your clients to kind of help, you know, encourage them along the way and give them that peace of mind and ease to keep on moving forward? 
Yeah, I think that being afraid of one's discomfort and one's pain is a big, big, big obstacle because when we're afraid to feel bad, we will tiptoe around certain things (laughs) and it makes it hard to just go for what you want or get to where you need to be or feel how you want to feel because you have that like energetic blockage of maybe you're actually feeling sad or you're not feeling confident or you're feeling anxious. And those feelings don't have to stop you. But if you're scared of them and you're not willing to feel them, it does become like a roadblock on the the path to feeling lighter and feeling better and following your passion and doing what lights you up. And so one of the big things that I help a lot of my clients with and people in my circle with is learning how, and this is like under the umbrella of what I call radical self-love, which is learning how to be with yourself unconditionally in the same way that like an amazing friend, your best friend will love you and hang out with you no matter how you're feeling. Like no matter if you're in a bad mood or if you're crying or if you're mad, like they will still just be with you and put their arm around you and, you know, give you a hug, give you a little pep talk. Like we all want that. But so few of us give that to ourselves. Often we're like, oh, I don't have time to feel like this. I don't want to feel like this. I'm supposed to be high vibe. I have to think positive to manifest my best life. I'm not allowed to feel bad, you know? And we put so much pressure to not embrace the entire range of human emotion and the human experience. And in that, we just make ourselves more stuck than we need to be. And I think part of the reason why I was stuck in a depression for so long was because I didn't know how to process my sadness. So instead of actually moving through it, it was like I was just stuck with it, you know? So I don't think I needed to have be depressed for three years. If I had the tools I had now, I could have maybe like healed in a month or two. Um, So that is one of the big pieces that I help people with and that I see a lot. And it it paralyzes people because they're like, ah, I don't want to go for that job or that raise because what if I ask and they don't give it to me and then I'm going to feel disappointed or I don't want to ask that person out that I really have a crush on because what if they say no and then I'm going to feel heartbroken. And it's like, We do these things or don't do these things out of fear of feeling a certain way. But when you can build like a nice rapport and friendship with all of your feelings and you don't have to make them mean something bad about yourself or something bad about your life, you can just say this is a part of the human experience. It's going to be uncomfortable for a few moments. Learn how to breathe through it. You become so liberated to go in the directions that you want to go in despite having fear or hesitation. And you don't have to live your life like trying to avoid certain feelings, which is like super limiting. Yeah, how much of that you're speaking, I'm resonating with because that was me too. Like I was just not only so much afraid to feel, I didn't know what I was feeling. It just felt so uncomfortable. And then there was just, it, it felt like at times like a vice grip. And you're like, what? is this that is clenching on me? And I don't know, one, how what it is, two, how to describe it, or three, how to release it. And so when we're not facing what is happening, it just gets tighter and tighter. And that's where it could, you know, in a sense, manifest in two forms of depression, anxiety, fear, worry, doubt, all the things that are at that low negative vibration. And so that's definitely all your department, because that's what you do. And that's raising that vibration to a high vibe to match the energetic alignment of the direction of where you want to go. And so I'd love to hear more on that and how how you get to those levels from a point of being at a low, dark place to where you are today. Yeah, I think the biggest piece with that is you have to start where you are. Like you can't skip steps on the emotional like ladder. (laughs) So if you see a ladder in your mind and let's say at the top of the ladder is like all the feelings that we love, the best ones, love, um, excitement, passion. And then under that is maybe like hopefulness. And then under that is maybe like contentment. And then you get like a little bored and then you go lower on the scale and then you're getting like irritated and then you're mad and then you're sad and then you're depressed. And then at the bottom is like hopelessness, despair, envy, all of those things. And people try to understandably so 
you know, escape the pain as fast as they can and just get to the top of the ladder. But anyone who's ever climbed a ladder, I don't think you've been able to jump from the bottom to the top in like one swoop, right? You have to step incrementally and work your way up. And I think where people get really stuck with even like affirmations or other self-help practices is that they try to jump the Grand Canyon and say things or act in ways that really don't, don't feel authentic to where they are right now. Instead of just, okay, what if we made it okay for you to be where you are? And then we will move you out of that space because it's like when you're trying to get somewhere on the GPS, you can't just say, this is where I'm going without giving it the start point. It still needs to know your current location or else it can't navigate you. So you have to accept your current location. It doesn't mean that you're condoning it. It doesn't mean you're telling the universe you want more. It just means you're releasing your resistance to it. You're saying, this is where I am right now. And I'm going to make that okay for now. It doesn't mean I have to be here forever. And let's see what wisdom and what is here for me. Because usually in those low vibrational spaces, when you're feeling bad in any sort of way, those negative emotions, they're not there to torture you. They're there to give you messages to help you live your best life. For example, If you are mad, it could be that somebody violated a personal boundary. That anger is trying to point you to that boundary. But if you don't allow yourself to notice the anger, to be with it, to sit with it, to get that, extract that information from it, you won't be able to voice that boundary in the future in a healthy way. So it's really trying to help you to know what you need in life, what you want in life, what works for you, what doesn't work for you. and By listening to your feelings first and then moving through them, you gain those keys to your own personal truth and your own personal wisdom. So I kind of forgot what the question was, but hopefully that answered it. (laughs) Yeah, I was just kind of walking through like the energetic ladder, how you can't just take that all in one swoop. And it is, it's the little incremental daily lessons that life is trying to show you, teach you, tell you, whatever that is. But you have to be so open to receiving that message. And if you just think like from a place of woe is me, I'm the victim of my life circumstances and situations. Well, that kind of thinking is just going to suppress you in that same state where it's harder to climb out when you're not actually seeking a way out. You're kind of seeking validation for how you currently feel. And that was something, um, you know, from my own personal experience, I, I recognized that. And through my own transformation, like 10 plus years ago, I when I really took a deep dive into like, this can't just be my life, that this, there has to be more, there has to be something greater and better than this sucky life that I was experiencing. And that was, um, you know, very true, because I had to really tune in and experience. And then I started having words for what I felt and then expressing that and moving through it. Because what I realized was whatever I was consuming and didn't have a place for release was just manifesting more of it internally. And that was, you know, preventing me from being the person I want to be. It was a lot of just at this point feeling stuck, stagnant, Um, anger, bitterness, resentment, those kind of things. And that keeps you at that low vibe operational level where, yeah, no wonder you keep getting more of what you don't want. Um, Yeah. So it's, it's, you know, you, how you say like, oh, it's this, you know, a whole lesson on X, Y, and Z, and you just shorten up really quick. And when you become that teacher-esque of the situation you experienced, you summarize it into bite-sized pieces. So it makes it easier to digest when somebody's in that pit where they just need less overwhelm and less information and quick to the point. And that's why it's so important to always have somebody in your corner rooting for you and supporting you. So I know that you mentioned about manifestation and in quite a few things. And I'm just curious to hear from your own words because I feel like that is kind of a word that's thrown out there and it could be misconstrued. And I would love to hear your take on it for our Mm -hmm. listeners who are thinking, okay, I manifest every day and it doesn't happen. Why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That is a two-part loaded question. I like it. So (laughs) my definition of manifestation is really deliberate creation, being intentional with your life, 
moving energy in the form of aligning your thoughts with what you want, aligning your actions with what you want, aligning your decisions with what you want, making room in your life for what you want. I mean, there's so many different levels that we can align and practice manifestation at. It's not only about your thoughts, which I think is one of the biggest places where people get stuck because they think, okay, I watched The Secret and I learned that like, I just have to think about it and it's going to happen. Okay, I'm going to think about it a lot. It's going to show up. I'm going to visualize it all the time. Super fun. So exciting. Like in the beginning, it's exciting, right? Because you're still like waiting for it to happen. But then once it's past some time, you're not really seeing a lot of changes. You're like, okay, why isn't it happening? I did what they told me to do. What the heck? Universe, where is my experience that I've been calling in? And that piece is really like, I'm actually working on a book about it right now because such a long answer. But to give you the short answer, really the thing that holds us back from manifesting what we want like quickly and efficiently is usually some form or another of resistance. And this can look like, internal resistance in the form of like a limiting belief, like, oh, money is for other people, but not for me. Or this can look like you want to be in a committed relationship. So like consciously, that's what you're manifesting. But then a part of you is still so heartbroken from the last fiasco that it's like, no way, not doing that. I hate men. I hate dating. This is the worst idea ever. Like we are not calling in a person. So consciously, you're like, I'm manifesting my person. But subconsciously, you're like sabotaging every date that you get asked on. You are not leaving your house. You are ghosting people and you don't know why. So really it comes down to resistance. And even if you're coming up against resistance in in outer circumstances, that's usually a reflection of some kind of internal resistance. So it usually always comes back to something inside of you is not on board with what you think and say that you want. So you have some of your energy working towards creating that desired outcome. And you have some of your energy working towards not creating that desired outcome or making sure it doesn't happen or making sure it takes longer or whatever it is. So it's like this internal tug of war, this vibrational push and pull. And so you don't have enough momentum to really make it happen or attract it to you in a powerful enough way that it's like easy, like how you think it should be. (laughs) Does that make sense? It does. It does. And and that's kind of the answer I was looking for because I, I understand it, but I know that it could kind of, like I said, get a little bit convoluted and there's so many different takes on it. And I've seen, okay, well, like you said, watch the secret. I'll just manifest it. I'll just write in my journal a bunch of times, a bunch of times. And then five years later, you're writing the same thing. You're like, but why hasn't it come true? And I do want to add one little thing and and if you disagree or not, just let me know. Cause I'm curious. Cause this is what some, something I found in my own life was it was manifestation, but it came through having manifestation married with action. And so yeah. how you said, having that aligned thought with the action and then the steps unfold naturally because you're actually stepping into the idea or the vision or whatever it is that you want. And I think there could be, you know, to sum that up, manifestation is not just journaling or writing it down and putting a sticky note on your fridge or your mirror. It's about that action. And that is you taking that first step. And I think this is great for how we're kind of structuring this podcast episode because we talked at, you know, just a few moments ago about where to get started. And and once you're there, what is that next step? And so that leads you through that momentum and action steps that you're actually you're walking in this manifestation process without you actually intending or knowing it. And so when you start picking your head up, you start noticing, oh, that's so beautiful. I love that. That aligns with me. That's the, those are my people. I'm attracting this. And you don't realize that you're literally walking in your dream. And so how yeah. cool is that? And it's just, I mean, had you always experienced that or that come through your own personal transformation journey? Well, first I want to say that I do agree with you that the action piece is not talked about enough because that's not sexy, right? It doesn't right. sell videos and <laughs> courses and books to say, oh, you're going to have to like, you know, put some work into creating your dreams. You're going to have to, I like how you said, step into the vision or step into the new life. Like 
There's a reason why you have a physical body on this physical plane and you incarnated into this physical 3D realm. It wasn't so you could just do everything on this astral energetic level. It was so you could work in the 3D with your body and move energy to co-create with the universe, right? People want it to just be like Amazon delivery style. Yeah. Like, oh, <laughs> this is what I'm asking for. Deliver it in two days. Thanks. Um, but yeah, there's going to be some, I'd say 90% of the time, there's going to be you taking action. Like, for example, I wanted to be an author for a long time, but I didn't like wait around for a book deal to like drop into my inbox, which eventually did happen. But first I self-published a book and I created a blog and I had a podcast and I was taking the action to become that person. Right. And one of the other missing pieces is like, People don't talk about manifestation being a journey of becoming. And I have this theory that like on a soul level, we use our genuine desires as like a carrot on a stick to motivate ourselves to become who we know we're capable of and who we want to be. So it's like, yes, you think you want to be a millionaire, but like you have to change your identity and your vibration and your way of being in order to sustain that lifestyle and be that person. And that's what you're actually after. You want to experience your own power. You want to experience your own flow, your own ease, you know? So it's a journey of co-creation. It's a journey of becoming and, and all, all the fun things that you do to manifest the scripting, the intention setting, or the the vision boards, you know, the meditations that I would call like the intention setting piece of the manifestation puzzle. Right. But obviously like if I'm scripting my journal and my fiance comes up and be like, what are you doing? You'd be like, just manifesting. But truly like, that's not the only thing that it takes to make it happen. Right. That's one piece of the manifestation puzzle. So I just wanted to agree with and elaborate on what you said, because I definitely do think more people Luckily, we are doing this. We need to talk about the action piece because people think it's just supposed to show up. And it's like, OK, yeah, sometimes when you're in perfect alignment and that's like the next best thing on your journey. But usually if you want something really bad, it's because you really are wanting to like up level yourself and your life and experience your own power in action, not from the couch you know? <laughs> right. Oh my gosh. Yes, yes, yes. All of that. And that's what I've, I've realized is that, and you mentioned about the becoming, which ironically, so in my programs, we have the creating the confident woman, and then we have the becoming the confident yes. woman. And in between both of it, we always use the ellipsis because it means it's a continuation. It doesn't happen. So when the creating it's, you know, creating dot, 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 the confident woman. So what does that look like? Let's create that vision. Let's create who this version of you would be. And then next up, we have our other programs and even our one-on-ones, which is the becoming. Let's take that deep dive in and walk this journey with you and watch as life is unfolding. And you are literally becoming the vision and version you had created. And it's mm -hmm. a beautiful, beautiful walk. It's a beautiful journey. It's it's an incredible experience. And I say that because that was my journey. And I know that you can say the same thing because it's like, yeah, when we're in that deep, dark place, it sucks. But when we come out of it and we look back, we look at it through a lens of just gratitude and compassion and empathy and just being so in alignment and grateful for the whole lesson itself. And when we've come on that through the heaviness, the darkness of it, we have that fresh perspective where we are now intentionally seeking out those little nuggets in life that are aligning and they become these little stepping stones for to further us into the direction of where we want to go. It's um I, I don't know. I, I I get high off of that. That's my high vibe, right? Talking about that, living it, experiencing it and sharing it. And, you know, it's just the whole aspect of life unfolding and you being a witness and get to enjoy the steps along the way with it. So as you said, yeah. we're creating. And I don't know where else you really get to do that. But here in this one life that many of us do take right. for granted. I know. It's so fun, right? And sometimes I'm like, oh my God, I'm having so much fun. I'm so glad I'm here. And then other times I'm like, this sucks. Life is horrible. Why did I sign up for this? This is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And, and to note on that, I mean, 
listen, not every day is peachy cane. Not everything no. is, is sunshine and rainbows. There are depths and seasons and lows that go low, low, low. But as you were stating, you'd been in, you know, depression, you experienced for like three years, where when we get to those lows, now having that wisdom, insight and experience, it doesn't take us nearly as long. And yeah. even though it feels like, oh, my gosh, why is this happening to me at that moment where we, we yeah. understand now at this point that it's happening for us. And right. so when we kind of tune in our mindset to intentionally seek out Okay, what what am I supposed to learn in this this terrible downside of messy life, right? That's where you start to tune in, you listen, you learn, and you grow. And that's so cool. Yeah, it is cool. And like when you're at the bottom, when you're in the pit, so to speak, whatever that looks like for you, that's your moment to really get clear about what you do want. Like that's the first step of creating your dream life is knowing exactly the opposite and experiencing the opposite. Like when you're your brokest, when you're your sickest, when you're your loneliness, like that's when you start asking life for what you want. And that's when you get clear about, oh my gosh, this is what I need to feel good. This is what I need to feel happy. This is the direction that I want to move in. And that kind of lights the fire. So it has its value. It has its place. I always call the contrast, aka the unwanted in life, the um, step zero of the manifestation process. Before you start consciously manifesting and doing the intention setting work and lining up with your desires, you go through the opposite. <laughs> Or you're single and you don't want to be single and you know you're not making as much money as you want and you don't live in a place that you love and whatever it is for you everyone's journey is unique but that is truly the starting point that catapults you into the dream life so we can't villainize it as much as we love to like when we're in it which is totally valid and understandable as soon as you get on the other side and you can have more perspective and like actually look at it from a more objective standpoint realize that it is for your clarity your growth your expansion hmm. And it's almost like sometimes you don't know what you want until you've had enough of what you don't want. Exactly. Sometimes you got to hit that pain threshold, which is yep. different for everybody. But I think we can all relate in some areas of life. Like you're not going to quit that job that you dislike until you really are over it. Right. You're not going to leave that toxic relationship until you've had enough. Like usually we stay a little bit too long because we have pretty high pain thresholds. Yeah. Um, and we're just not really like as a species, humans, we're not like so volunteered to change. Like, oh, let me just change because I feel like it. No. Or usually like, OK, I really don't want to change. Change is scary. I don't like change. And the only thing that's going to really motivate me to do it is experiencing enough of what I really don't like. <laughs> exactly. Part and of the process. Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah. And I remember, you know, from my own experience as well, but then when, when I've kind of, after recognizing and learning this, I've realized now that sometimes in the personal development space, it's a lot of that. Just, just think of what you want and just very like, what's the word I'm looking at? Like just too over the top Yeah, where it's not actual and practical where, oh, well, just think of all, like, picture your vision and your dream life. Well, when somebody's at such a dark place, that dream life is just not to feel that pain anymore. They can't imagine. Right. The dream is a little bit less big than that. Exactly. <laughs> so it's not, oh, I just want to be like sailing around the world on a yacht or something like that. It's like, great. I mean, maybe you'll get there once you kind of get your head out of this dark place that you're in. And it was a starting point where... I remember at the start of my life, uh, transformation part, it was, here's a list, write down all the things you want. And I stared at that thing. It was probably the most challenging exercise. And then also the question of, of who am I, right? So when you're in that dark place, the only thing you hear is no, not in negative. So that's where I had to spin down, uh, flip it on its side and say, okay, well, here's where I start. I am not. I am not. I am not. I don't want. I don't want. And I don't want. So I had to dump that all out. Get that out of like, you know, I think it's like uh, opening a can of worms. Get all the nasty stuff out first. 
because deep down are your desires, your wants, your longings. And those are the things that through life had just been suppressed and depressed and just compressed into this can. And that's where it, when it's open, it just bursts. And that's why I say about holding on to so much of your your negative energy that it consumes you because there's so much good in everybody. But if we don't prune them, the branches or or weed the garden of these negative thoughts and everything that has happened, then we can't get to the good that's inside of us. We want that good. But we don't know what that is. We don't even know that we have that within us. And so that's why I say when I'm starting out with my clients, if you can't think of what you want in a positive way, let's dish out all the stuff that you don't want and what you believe that you're not. And we're just going to set that over here. We're not going to address it until later. And then once we filter that out, then we can really go back into your longings and desires and find that identity that was once in there and transform that and come out in this new version of whoever this woman is that you long to be. Yeah, that exercise makes so much sense why it would work too, because vibrationally, when you're in a low vibrational space, you're not a match to high vibrational thoughts. You can't actually access those big, awesome, amazing desires that are dormant in your heart because you're not in a space to hear it. You're not in a space to hold it. You're not anywhere in that vicinity, which is bringing us back to the point we made earlier of like, it's a progressive journey. Start with where you are. Like, let's release the resistance to that. And generally speaking, in the same way that you do, I try to guide people who are in a really low space, not like to the top thriving best area of their life right away, but really just how can we get you to a space of relief? Mm -hmm. How can we get you what you need? Your basic needs met, you're feeling relieved and you're just out of that place. Then from that space, you can go into the hyper creative mode of like, these are all my dreams and this is what I want to experience next. But it, you're right that you can't just be like in this horrible space and then say tomorrow I'm going to live my dream life. Like, <laughs> that's just not how it goes. Right, that's kind of like the, the, the complete opposite of manifestation. Yep, tomorrow I'm going to start. <laughs> what are you doing with it? I don't know yet, but I'm just going to write it down and I'll eventually convince myself to believe it. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, and you brought up a good point of like not knowing what you want. And from a human design perspective, I don't know how much you like or talk about or know about human design, but they label people in two categories of you're either a specific manifester or non-specific manifester. And for people who are specific manifestors by nature in their human design chart, that's how they're born. Um, they do well with having very clear vision, having lots of goals. Like if you ask them what they want, they'll paint you a picture, like lots of clarity details. But people who are indirect manifestors, sometimes I find that they're really confused. They're like, well, I don't know what I want. I just don't want to feel bad. Like I know what I want my best life to look like. Like, I have no idea. There's so many things to choose from. And what I tell those people is exactly what you said. Like, okay, let's look at what you don't want and find the opposite, right? If you don't want to be alone, you probably want to experience some connection. If you don't want to be broke, you probably want to experience some money or whatever it is. But also go for the feelings. You don't have to have a super specific vision of exactly what every day like five minute increment looks like in your dream life. You just have to know how you want to feel and you can hold that feeling as your vision, right? Like I want to feel empowered. I want to feel free. I want to feel powerful, whatever it is, that can be enough to manifest your dream life. And you can let the universe fill in the blank. If you just say, this is how I want to feel and the universe, bring me whatever is going to help me feel that way. Bring me the experiences, the resources, the people, the mindset, whatever I need in order to become that, bring it. I'm here for it. <laughs> exactly. Oh my gosh. I'm so glad that you brought that up because one, actually human design, we were just talking about that with our community just recently. It, it came it's up. so right? fun. Seriously. But what are you? What are you? And so I did mine. And um, so I'm a projector. Oh, cool. Yeah, because awesome. I live in that very big visionary creative space. I am through and through with details to alignment, like all the things. And I, once I've recognized that that really does align with who I am, it's now given me kind of that space and that freedom to stay in that lane where I don't have yeah. to feel like I'm muddling everything else. And then secondly, when you mentioned about, obviously we're talking about manifestation to this 
extent here, where we actually create things twice in, in our mind, right? And then in reality here. And through the manifestation process, like you said, getting clear on what it is you want and actually embracing and harnessing those feelings, letting your, yourself embody that, what that feels like. So I know for me, there's so many different forms of meditation too. And maybe we could just spend a few minutes just quickly kind of getting your view on it. Um, because when I first started out, I didn't understand what meditation was. I just thought it was just sitting there in silence, which was excruciating because this brain <laughs> shut up. And I, and I thought I had to retrain this brain. And I felt like every time I would meditate, it became a struggle and I was failing at it. And that just kind of repeated a lot of what I was already feeling when you're already at this very low vibe. So for me, I recognized that manifestation had in, in, manifesting what I wanted, I had to first experience it. And that I turned into uh, a form of meditation, which was a visual. And for me, I have to have like a guided visual meditation, because then I'm not listening to my voice, I'm listening to a guide who keeps me on this path. And as they're kind of giving me walks or prompts or something like that, my mind is actually creating those next steps. And so when I practice that, and then now I walk in alignment in reality, and it's like, holy cow, this is just incredible. So there are different forms of meditation. So if you can just give your point of view on that too, and how that aligns with it, because there's so many different, I feel like there's so many different roads that all lead to the same place. Yeah. Well, my first thought is there's so many different ways to meditate and things to meditate on, right? So you can meditate on movement in the form of Tai Chi or yoga or dancing or whatever feels good. You can meditate on your breath, which is like the more classic form of meditation where people think they have to think about nothing. But really, it's you're so focused on the breathing that your mind is full of that presence on the breath ideally so full that you're not thinking of so much other stuff or if you are you're kind of just letting it pass by or I mean I love a good guided meditation especially if my mind is tired like at the end of the day I'm not gonna have strong focus to like be with my breath or whatever I'm trying to meditate on so I love a good guided meditation app I really love um headspace is a fun one Um, insight timer is my favorite one because it gives you like all the stats and like other people who are meditating at the same time as you. And I'm like, you know, there's so many on YouTube. Um, I've created a bunch, uh, you know, there's podcasts that'll put out meditations. Like there's no excuse really to not at least try and explore different forms of meditation and see what works for you. Um, I've done this fun meditation too, sometimes where I just call it like a resistance release. And it's like you really tune into the subtle energies of like the room and your body and your breath. And you just like let your body kind of go and see like what you like let yourself be like a tree and you just kind of like sway in the wind, but you're not actually swaying in the wind. You're like responding to the energy around. So instead of like being really erect and like being really uptight and just focusing on the breath, you're really like just loose and like breathing nice and just feeling free. And for me, I used to be a dancer, so I'm very musically inclined. So it's really easy for me to meditate if I have the right piece of music (laughs) or if I'm listening to some sort of repeating frequency or something, I can get into like a zone where I just kind of float away or go out of my body or do whatever fun thing I'm wanting to do that day. But I think as far as like manifestation and meditation, I think meditation is a good tool for one, releasing resistance, whether it's to your feelings or your breath or your body or whatever you're going through. And I think guided ones and visual ones are really good for the intention setting purpose. So Mm -hmm. I love a good like visualization meditation to help you manifest that money, help you manifest that health, help you manifest whatever it is you're wanting to experience. I think meditation is a great, great tool. And there's so many fun ways to do it. I haven't even tried them all. I've tried a bunch, but I know there's a bunch more. (laughs) Well, and that's the important thing. Try them, try them out, see which ones fit you. Don't discount and say, this is hard. This sucks. It's, I can't quite. Yeah. I don't know it doesn't have to be quit. so square. Like, oh, I, I just have to sit here and breathe. You know, there's so many like more interesting ways to do it too. <laughs> it, it, it's so true. And I didn't even realize, like, even when I go for my like evening walks, I'll just put on some music that really just decompresses my mind, you know, separates from like, okay, I'm leaving work because I work at home. And yeah, 
you need a place to like many people find them their car ride home. I don't. So I'll go for my long walk and I'll just put on some music. And next thing I know, I'm just kind of creating some incredible like ideas and, and just insights and this beautiful takeaway moment. I come home and I just start journaling. Like I wouldn't have done it if I was still in my home space and not on the move. So I didn't realize that there was, you know, for me, that was my form of movement meditation. And then there's the visualization meditation. And then sometimes just taking a few moments to, you know, ex- inhale and exhale and focus on that breath work. So those who are listening, do not be afraid to try variety of things, right? So you have to figure out what works for you. And if something doesn't work for you today, don't discard that forever because I, like I said, I thought just sitting there in silence was boring. Now I crave it. I didn't know how much I would love it because you've kind of retrained your mind in the way you think and process that when you come back to something that you kind of wrote off that you didn't like, you find that you have a new new found af- affinity for it, right? You don't have to love it. You don't have to dislike it, but you could just be like, I, it's a tool. You use it when it's necessary. Mm-hmm. Um, but I love the entirety of it where looking back, I could never have imagined I'd be at where I am today. Would you agree on yours too? Like you could, you could yes, have a better no. life, but could you imagined the life that you have today? no. Yeah, no, I would agree with you on that. Cause there's definitely, so I'm like a huge dreamer. Like sometimes I feel cursed that I dream so big. I'm like, oh my God, why can't I just want normal things like normal people? Like, what the heck? Why, why do I dreams have to be so big? But um, so in that sense, I'm like, oh yeah, we're still like working on it. We're getting there. But definitely I would never have dreamed that I'd be like living in the Carolinas, about to marry like a ex-professional football player who's six, seven, like who even is six, seven, what the heck? Like I didn't dream that up, you know, or like that I would be living in like a rural country area or that I would be even doing this type of work because I was on a trajectory to be a dancer. So my whole adolescence, I was like, you know, visualizing that I would be this professional ballerina and here I am writing books in the country. (laughs) So... (laughs) I mean, yeah, I definitely could not have imagined. And it does make me curious for the future. I'm like, universe, what you got up your sleeve next? I want to (laughs) know. It keeps you on the edge of your seat with just wonder and curiosity. And I think that's that childlike state that we, you know, should never outgrow. We should really embrace more of that. So it's fun. Stay curious, folks. Stay curious. Absolutely. (laughs) And so that I know that we're about to wrap up, but I know that you have some incredible things happening and upcoming retreats and give us the details, like all the all the information, because I know you have so many things in the works, which, as we said at the beginning of this podcast, is that all of it is meant to assist that individual in getting to the next level. So dish it out. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. There's so much. Where do we start? (laughs) Well, I would say my most like potent offering is my annual retreat that I do in Mexico. Uh, It's in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico, which is like a little beach town on the Pacific side. And it is just a week of women coming together to up level energetically, to heal, to learn how to love themselves, to live in luxury, to eat great food, to ride ATVs. Like it's kind of like a yoga retreat slash spiritual retreat meets like a girl's trip. (laughs) Because I don't like to keep it so serious because when you're activating and opening, like it can be heavy. There's a lot of tears, you know, you're sharing your heart. It can be tiring, but then you got to go to the beach after and have some fun, (laughs) play in the water, get a tan, you know? So that is something that's really exciting. And anyone who is resonating with my medicine will probably love the retreat. So people can find out about that at kelseyaida.com slash retreat. And I think I said it's in October. So coming up. And the other stuff, oh my gosh, there's so many books. My books are like one of the easiest like 
low cost entry point to work with me and get my magic and my perspectives and exercises and stuff, um, which is why I always wanted to be an author. Because I'm like, well, if I write this book, a lot of people can have access to it, unlike maybe a course or one on one coaching. So if you just search Kelsey Aida on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, wherever you'll find all the books and there are a bunch. So just whichever one you're feeling called towards, do like a little Oracle card spread of all the books and be like, this is the one for me. <laughs> And you can pick a book like that, um, gift a book to your friends. They're all super like inspirational and empowering, manifesting affirmations, self-love, all that good stuff. And yeah, working on a new book at the moment, that'll be good. So stay tuned for that. And we're working on a new money manifesting course because I've been feeling really that like as a collective, as humanity, we're really wanting to like master our abundance vibes and learn how to live in more ease and flow. So that'll be coming out soon. And yeah, that was like a million things. So start with those. (laughs) Yeah, but they're all, all supporting pieces to the greater, greater outcome. And that's incredible. I know that you have so much going on. And so I just want to thank you for this time spent here with me and with our listeners. And of course, we are including everything in the show notes. So be sure to check those and connect with Kelsey. And actually, how can they connect with you? What is your favorite place to hang out? Yeah. So I'm usually on Instagram at Kelsey Aida. I've been playing with TikTok lately. Same handle there. Uh, KelseyAida.com is my website. And also the podcast is a great free resource. So if you like podcasts, which you probably do, if you're listening to this, you should check out the show. It's called High Vibin It. No G. We're too cool for the G. It's just High Vibin apostrophe it. (laughs) Three separate words. (laughs) And yeah. So Kelsey Aida everywhere or KelseyAida.com. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for this time. And I can't wait for our listeners to tune in and of course, follow along with you on your journey. So thank Thank you. you. Yes. Thanks for having me. It was so fun. Yes. Hey there. Thank you so much for joining me on today's episode of the Confident Woman Podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode as much as I did, please be sure to like, subscribe and leave us a review. Thanks again for listening.